Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. News Radio 78, WBBM, Chicago. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall said the angry old wolf to the tender young lamb you think I've got the time to count your crimes you pup your guilt consists in this I want to eat you up and so it goes we now question the innocence of the victim after all what right do girls have to be beautiful or men to be rich especially when there is so much hunger for beauty and wealth, and so few people have it. Hey, why don't you watch where you walk? What do you want me to do, can you? You can't kill me. What do you mean? You've already killed me once. What are you talking about? And you can't kill a person twice. Hey, what are you saying? Isn't that what's called double jeopardy or something? <laughs> mystery drama, The Wintering Place, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Was it a dream? He keeps asking himself, was it a dream that morning, that golden August morning in the woods, with the light filtering through the trees, the dappled pattern of sunlight casting a series of shimmering shadows on the turning leaves? Was it a dream, he keeps asking himself, the girl standing there with long yellow hair and deep blue eyes and flashing red lips and excited voice? Was it a dream? Oh, please, please, he prays. Dear Lord, have mercy. Grant that it was only a dream. Hello there. Oh, oh you startled me, Mr. Baring. I'm sorry, Martha. My name isn't Martha. It isn't? Well, you look just like... I'm her sister, Robin. Oh. Well, how do you do? <laughs> I'm here on a visit. Are you? I hope you enjoy it. Oh, I will. It's the most beautiful country. Are you writing anything in that notebook? Of course. I mean, that's a silly question. <laughs> Naturally, you're writing. I saw you. I'm a lepidopterist. Yeah, I beg your pardon? A lepidopterist. Uh, yeah, I heard you, but I still don't know of what... Of course, we begin as biologists, and we become naturalists, and then we specialize. And my specialty is the order Lepidoptera. Or the butterfly. And you make a living at it? Oh, yes. I teach at the state university. All about butterflies. Boy, well, is there... Is there enough to it? Oh, my goodness, yes. I made a life's work out of it. Well, that don't be all. <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Barry? Say, how'd you know my name is Barry? Well, when I arrived the other day, my sister drove through Main Street, and she pointed out all the important people in town. I'm not all that important. She said you're the biggest landowner in these parts. Oh, what do I own? A couple thousand acres? Why, back in Texas, where my folks come from. I understand this is your land. Ah, uh, yes, I do own this piece. And I'm probably trespassing. Oh, no, no, no. I have an idea that this stretch of woodland might be part of the migratory route of the monarch butterfly, Odana plexippus. For a pretty girl, you come out with some words that are jawbreakers. <laughs> well, butterflies go south for the winter. Oh, like birds? Oh, yes. Some of them go all the way to Mexico. Oh, I thought a butterfly only lived a couple of days. Oh, and some have been known to live for nine months. And they go all the way to Mexico? Mm-hmm. All the way and back. Why do they do that? 
they respond to mysterious biological urges. What's a good-looking gal like you getting all involved with these, <laughs> these insects for? How many times I've been asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a pretty smile. Oh, thank you. You know, if you look very closely at the top of those trees... And such a beautiful voice. It's as sweet as music. You think they're leaves, but they're not. Ro Robin? They're monarch butterflies. Hundreds of thousands of them. Robin? Many of them will never see Mexico. They'll die en route. Die young. In the full blush of their beauty. Robin. What is it, Mr. Baring? You're so pretty. Oh, please, let go of my arm. You're so pretty. Mr. Baring, please, please let go. No, I've been so lonely. Please. For so oh, long. No, you're hurting my arm. I... Don't want to hurt please, you. Please, let go of me. I wouldn't hurt you for I'll, the world. I'll scream. What do you, please, what do you want to scream for? Uh, what if somebody hears you? No, no, please. no, no. Just be quiet. There's nothing to scream about. Please. I don't want to hurt you. I, I only want to no, look at no. you. No, Somebody help me. Please. I told you to shut up. No. <laughs> Pauline, come in here. Yes. Yes, Mr. Baring. I want to go over these accounts with you. You're spending too much money. Well, Mrs. Baring didn't seem to think so. No, that's another thing. Mrs. Baring is gone. Hmm. You're telling me. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. Somebody has to tell you. It might as well be me. Something's come over you, Mr. Baring. Now, you just look here. No, no, I'll say my piece, and then you can fire me. Oh, you changed since your wife died. I know how you loved her. And I know how you miss her. Nobody can ever know that. Well, you take your misery out on everybody. You used to be a nice, kind guy. Look at you now. You have to get everybody. You just wait for a person to make a mistake so you can jump on them. That isn't true. No. Well, you say you want to go over the accounts with me. You're going to wind up giving me this lecture about how inefficient I am, how I waste your household money. Well, I have the figures here. Well, good for you. And you know what we'll find out? If I had exercised more care these last 30 days, I could have saved you the grand sum of $3.98. Well, it's, it's the principle of the thing. $3.98. And you got more money than you could ever spend if you lived to be a thousand. There are other things involved here. Oh, yeah? Well, you tell me about them. Well, you're always forgetting. Okay. Okay. Score point for your side. I got a bad memory. I can't remember things. I always forget things, so what? So what? That's how I am. But I always was able to make this house a pleasant place to live in. You have to admit that. Yeah, I admit it. You gotta make up your mind. Am I worth it? I forget things all the time. And I'm not a... Well, I'm not the thriftiest housekeeper. But am I worth it? Do I stay? Or do you want to hire somebody else? Uh, look, I just... Uh, I'm not myself anymore. <laughs> well, I just got finished telling you. I don't know what gets into me. Well, you'll have to put a stop to it. I'll try. Okay. It's just that I miss her. I miss her so much. I know. I didn't think you could ever miss anybody that way. You know what you ought to do. Marry again. How could I ever get married again? She's cold in her grave. She's been dead a year. I could never marry anybody. Now, well, who's making that kind of racket? All right, hold your horses. I'm coming. Well, if it isn't the merry mailman himself. Pauline. Now, what, Bob Fuller? What's the racket for? You got some uh, special mail for us, Bob? Mr. Baring, listen. What, what, what is it? It's, it's just terrible. I, 
A murder. Murder? Well, what are you saying? There has been a murder. Who? Where? Somebody, somebody better get on the phone quick. Well, who, who, who's been murdered? Just call the sheriff. Tell us, Bobby. It's, it's a girl. Who? I don't know that, that, that girl. Which girl? You know, I, what's her name? What's her name, Martha? Martha's been mad. Martha Penrose? No, 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 not Martha. Uh, Martha's sister. She, Robin. She, she, yeah, the, the one that's been visiting her. Murdered. The college teacher with, with, with the long blonde oh, hair. Oh, no. Yeah, she's no. dead. I've seen her. Where? You know where the woods begin at, at the edge of the creek? Bobby, you sure? Well, look, I was taking a shortcut like I always Bobby, do. Bobby, how can you be sure she's dead? And there on the path just ahead of me was... was Should we call a doctor? Let's run out there. Now, Pauline, she is dead. But she's laying out there. Nothing can happen to her now, Pauline. Th- th- this girl is dead? Yes, yes, I covered her with covered her with my raincoat. Uh, uh, listen, uh, Pauline, yeah. you want to pick up that phone and call oh, the yeah. sheriff, huh? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And somebody's got to break the news to Martha Penrose. <laughs> what the, what's the sheriff's number? Look, I don't want to be the one to tell Martha. Oh, oh no, sir. I'll just tell operator. I, I found the body, and that is enough for one person. Hello? Hello, who's this? Jennifer? Oh, Georgina. Uh, connect me with the sheriff's office, will you? It's an emergency. Oh, I will never forget that beautiful yellow hair with the bright red Hello. blood Hello, on Sheriff. It. Yeah, yeah, this is Pauline over at Frank Barron's place. <laughs> sheriff, you want to get over here right away? There's been a murder. Yeah. Oh. He says he's on his way. Oh, that poor girl. To be murdered like that. The Lord give it. The Lord take it away, Bobby. Then it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a what? What'd you say, Mr. Barry? Huh? What, what'd I say? When? Just now. I didn't say anything. More coffee, Sheriff? Well, thanks, Mr. Barry. It's been a long day. I asked Miss Taylor to set up coffee and sandwiches for your deputies. That's very kind of you. Has anybody found anything? No, no, not yet. Sorry to say. We've been combing the woods. I hope you get him. Yeah, so do I. Martha Penrose is such a fine woman. Yeah. To have a thing like this happen to her own sister. And out here, of all places. I don't know, we ever thought we'd, we'd have murder. Uh, what'd the doctor say? Well, yeah, she was beaten up pretty bad. And what killed her? She hit her head hard against a tree. Uh, was she, uh... Hmm? uh had she been, uh... uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doc said she, uh, she'd been criminally assaulted. Uh, it happened on my property, too. Well, it could have happened anywhere. Sheriff, do you realize what you just said? Hmm? You said... It could have happened anywhere. I guess that's what the world has come to, and a thing like this could happen anywhere. Yeah, yeah I guess you're right. And there are no clues, nothing to go on? No, no, she was just taking a walk. Now, she had a notebook and a pencil. We found those lying by her body. And Martha said she had an expensive gold watch. I was missing. Well, the killer must have taken it. Well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, what do you aim to do now, Sheriff? Well, I'll ask for special investigators from the county. I mean, they got the resources and experience. A hick sheriff like me? <laughs> what do I know? I'll get it, Pauline. I'm on my way out. Good morning, Mr. Bering. Well, there's not much left to the morning, Fuller. You should have been here with the mail an hour ago. Yeah, well, you know, some days we uh, get a heavier load than others. Uh, still, there's no reason for the mail to be this late. Uh, I, I guess not. I should report this. Uh, look, look, Mr. Barry, I know it's my fault. It's just that I don't take that shortcut through your woods anymore. After what happened last week, I get butterflies in my stomach just thinking about it. What did you say? Huh? What did you just say? Uh, I, I didn't say anything. Yes, you did. What, you did? Mr. Baring. Why did you say that? But why did I say what? Hey, let go of me. Why did you say that? What are you trying to do? Let go of me. What do you mean? Mr. Baring, stop it or I have to call the sheriff. Well, what is this sudden violent rage on the part of Mr. Frank Baring? 
Evidently, when the mailman said what he did, it was like touching a match to a fuse. But what exactly was it that was said? And why should it affect Frank? Well, if you were really paying attention, you'd know exactly what that dynamite word is and why it can make Frank blow up like that. Meanwhile, we'll keep him sizzling till Act Two. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind, said Mr. Shakespeare. And for a mind that is filled to the bursting point with guilt, we give you Mr. Frank Baring. Mr. Baring is haunted by guilt. He's consumed. He's devastated by guilt. And with good reason, he happens to be guilty of murder. But so far, only he knows that. So far. <laughs> Mr. Baring, stop it. Let go of him. Let go of Mr. Fuller. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Mr. Baring. Have you... What got into you? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. What did you want to try to knock me down for, anyhow? Look, I'm just doing my job. Look, I'm I'm sorry. Okay? No. No, it's not okay. Just because you're the big honcho in this part of the woods doesn't give you the right to knock people around you. Look, all. look, Bobby. Mr. Baring hasn't been feeling too good. Oh, you keep out of it, Pauline. I said I was sorry. Look, you don't like the way I do my job? Okay, that is your privilege. Report me to my supervisor. But don't you figure you can lay a hand on me. Do you understand that? Oh, sure. Sure he does. Now, why don't you go about your rounds, Bobby? Here's your mail. I hope it's all bills. Oh, Mr. Baring, why'd you do a thing like that for? I... I don't know. I'm not sure that's a good enough answer. Yeah, ever since Emily died, I... And I don't I, know if that's a good enough excuse either. I'm just not myself, that's all. You jumped on him because he said something. I just lost my head. I don't know why. He said something that set you off. What was it? I can't remember. But you were ready to kill him. What'd he say? I, I tell you, I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. I don't remember. I'll help you remember. Now, look here. What business is that of you? You were mad the minute he walked in. I just happened to lose my temper, that's all. You were mad at him because the mail was late. Maybe I was. And he said something. Now, look, Pauline, I'm late enough. Now, we'd better have this out. I have to leave. If you leave before we get to understand this thing, I won't be here when you get back. Now, I recall. He said he was late because he no longer takes the shortcut through your woods. He said, after what happened last week, I get butterflies in my stomach. Just thinking about it. And then you jumped on him. Why? I don't know why. I can't tell you why. Do you know how many butterflies there are, Mr. Barry? Robin. Robin, listen. I didn't want to kill you. The answer is, there are thousands of different species. Butterflies and moths. I didn't even want to hurt you. All under the heading of Lepidoptera. I've been so lonely I could die. Lepidoptera is made up of two Greek words. Emily had the same golden hair. Lepidel, which means scaly. And taro, which means wings. And the blue eyes. The wings of all moths and butterflies are covered with scales if you look closely. When you talk, your whole face seems to light up just like hers did. The monarch is a fascinating creature in all of its life stages. And I just had to touch you. That's all I wanted to do. Just touch you. Egg, pupa, larva, chrysalis. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Listen to me. If you only listen. You didn't listen to me that morning. And so I had to... I had to... Will you listen now? Listen? To what? Listen to me. What do you want to tell me? I don't want to tell you anything. I want to ask you something. Yes? Can you forgive me? Forgive you? 
Why should I forgive you? Because I didn't mean to kill you. Does that excuse you? No, but... Then I... why should I forgive you? Because... Because... You did kill me. It's true. Yes. But I didn't mean to. When you killed me, I was 32 years old. Oh, I'm sorry. I worked so hard all my life. All my short life. I didn't want to kill you. I never had a chance to enjoy life. There was only something I could do. There is. Tell me. I'll do it. Confess. Confess? Go to the sheriff. Confess that you killed me. It's the only way I'll ever forgive you. No. Then I'll never forgive you. Oh, please, Robin, please. You must confess. Confess, and I'll forgive you. I... I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, maybe you can't, but I can. Huh? What? Pauline... You say you uh, can't tell me why, hmm? Well, what do you mean, I can't tell you why? I, I, I can't tell you what? Well, what have we been talking about? Why, the word butterflies made you jump all over poor Bobby. Butter? Butterflies? Yes. It's that poor girl who was murdered. Martha's sister who was visiting. She was involved with butterflies. Oh? And you feel guilty about her getting murdered, don't you? Me? Why should I feel guilty? Why? I don't know why. Maybe because it happened on your property. So what if it did? You don't have any cause for guilt. What, what could you have done about it? Oh, I better be getting along. I got a lot to do today. Mr. Baring, take a word of advice from me. A lot of hard things have happened to you. First you lost Emily. And now this terrible murder on your property. You have to keep your mind very busy. And that was the Mozart piece we promised you. Turning now to opera on today's gems from the classics, we have the beautiful aria, Un Bel D from Puccini's masterpiece, Madame Butterfly. No. Oh, no. No. Hey! What do you think you're doing walking out in the middle of the road? Do you want to get killed? I can't get killed. I'm already dead. Where is... It's you. Yes, it's me, Robin. Where are you going? I'm going to the place where they go for the winter. Where? Who goes for the winter? Where they go. The butterflies. Uh, Remember I told you they go to a warm southern place? I must be going crazy. Many of my colleagues say it's Mexico. Okay. I understand. I've got a guilty conscience. But I think that here in Southern California... But it wasn't all my fault. We had the climate and the conditions. You were stupid. I didn't mean to hurt you. To provide a wintering place. And I think I know where now, it please, is. please, please go away from me. Don't you want to come with me? Come with you? Where? To the wintering place. Wintering place? So few people have ever seen one. I never did myself. But my professor, my old professor, he described it. There's nothing like it anywhere on earth. Beautiful butterflies. They cover the trees like another coat of foliage. And they change the entire light and color of the forest. This, this is just my imagination. And most of the time they lie dormant. But then... As if in response to some mysterious primeval urge, they flutter their wings, and suddenly the colors of the forest change as millions and millions of butterfly wings create unbelievably breathtaking kaleidoscopic designs. Brilliant reds and yellows and browns and blues and greens. Uh, gotta get out of here. Come with me. You'll be one of the very few people in the world to have ever seen the wintering place. Come with me. Go with you? Stay with me. I... You wanted me? No, I... Confess. Admit it. 
I only wanted to look at you. That isn't true. I just wanted to hold your hand. You wanted me the way you wanted Emily. No, no. When Emily was young. No. I'm a young Emily. The Emily you fell in love with. No. I have her hair, her eyes, her smile, even her voice. What you're saying isn't true. But I am not saying it. You're saying it. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yes. Then come with me. It's what you want to do more than anything else in the world, isn't it? Yes. We'll go to the wintering place. Such wonder, such beauty. We'll lie down under the trees. And we'll stay with the butterflies for as long as they do. We'll come back when they do. And we'll live as they do. Because they're the wisest and the most beautiful of all the children of nature. Say you'll come with me. Yes. Yes, I'll come with you. And you'll live with me. Always. Promise. I'll live with you always. I'll make you so happy. Look in my eyes. You know I will. I'll make you as happy as Emily did. Do you believe me? I believe you. Now we shall leave for the wintering place. But first... First... Yes? First we must stop. Stop? Where? Where? You must visit the sheriff, so that you may confess. Confess? Confess what? Confess you killed me. Oh, no. No, I won't do it. I, I, I can't do it. Do you want to come with me? Stay with me? Live with me and be happy forever in the wintering place? Yes. Then you must go to the sheriff. Yeah, but I... I... If you won't... I will leave you forever. Oh, no. Please. Then tell me. You will go to the sheriff. How do you suppose it'll work out? Will he confess? Or will he dismiss the whole business as a figment of his imagination? Well, don't speculate. Relax. You'll get the whole thing neatly laid out for you in Act Three. The scientists tell us that we can neither create nor destroy matter. Well, we admit we can't create it. That is, after all, the exclusive prerogative of a higher power than ourselves. But destroy it? Isn't that within our abilities? Actually, long ago we discovered the act of murder, and far too frequently do we practice it. But do you destroy a man when you kill him? Isn't there something vital and dynamic that lives on? Mr. Frank Baring is having his problems. You must go to the sheriff and confess. C confess that I killed you? It's the truth, isn't it? Yes. Then go. Oh, Franklin. You just called me Franklin. Of course. Only Emily would ever call me Franklin. I know. Well, how do you know? Because I'm part of Emily now. And when I tell you to go to the sheriff and confess, it's also Emily who's telling you. Yeah, but to go to the sheriff and... and... Franklin, would Emily ever tell you to do anything that was wrong? Will you go, Franklin? Yes. I knew you would. We knew you would, Emily and I. Will you come with me? No, it isn't permitted. Go. We'll wait for you here. Will you? And then we all go to the wintering place together. Yeah. 
Sheriff. Oh, hey. Well, I'm glad to see you, Frank. <clears throat> Sit down. Uh, yeah, Sheriff, I uh, came here to... Uh... Well, I see you got my message. Well, huh? message? Yeah, sure. I called you this morning. Why would you have called me, Sheriff? Well, Pauline answered the phone, said you hadn't come down to breakfast yet, but I see she gave you the message to uh, drop in and see me. No, she never gave me any message. Oh, that woman, she can't remember a blame thing. How many times do I have to tell her to write things down? Well, that's no good. Even if she does write down a message, she forgets where she puts a blame piece of paper. All right, what are you getting so worked up about, Frank, huh? Because she always forgets to tell me. But she must have told you you're here, ain't she? Well, I'm here because I... Because... <laughs> Sheriff, hmm? why did you want to see me? Huh? Good news. What do you mean? They, uh... They got the killer. They what? Yeah. They got the fellow that murdered Martha's sister, Robin. The uh, state cops picked him up in near San Francisco. You know that uh, watch she was wearing? <laughs> A fool. He, he tried to pawn it. If it's the same watch, we... It is the same watch. Well, Martha identifies it positively as the one she bought for Robin the day she graduated. No, no, it's the same watch. Where is the killer now? Frank... I know how you feel and what you'd like to do, but the law has to handle it. Where is he? Downstairs in the lockup. Could I see him? Uh, I uh, I have to talk to him, man. Uh, you can stand outside the cell. Well, what do you got to say for yourself this morning, Eddie? I'll tell you the same story I give to the state cops. Well, that wasn't much of a story. Hey, look, what do you want from me? I was down this part of work. What for? You know what for? Trying to make a fast buck. I don't deny it. When I'm cutting through these woods, and there she is laying there on the ground, and she is dead. Now, if you come across a dead body, aren't you supposed to report it to the authorities as a good citizen? But I'm not a good citizen. I'm a hood, a punk. I don't deny it. All I got to do is report this, and the cops say, Buster, you're the one who knocked the wall. Mm hmm. And how do you get me past the watch, Eddie? Uh, the watch? Mm hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there's a sunlight shining through the branches of the tree she's laying on the sea, and it uh, shines on his gold watch. It almost takes my eye out. If it wasn't for the sunlight, I'd have never spotted the thing. This had to go at least seven, eight bills. That was your mistake, Eddie. You should have left it on her wrist. Yeah. So you were walking along the woods, minding your own business, and you came across the body, huh? <laughs> now, that's your story? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like I said, ain't much of a story. But it's true. Oh, well, good luck with it. In front of the jury. <laughs> chance he might be telling the truth. <laughs> like you got a chance of being elected president of the United States, Frank. You're convinced he's guilty. Well, look, he's got a record. Yeah, I understand that for theft. And uh, for the other thing, too. What other thing? Uh, rape. Now, he's had uh, one conviction and beaten a couple of others. Well, that meek-looking little... Mm -hmm. That's hard to believe. Mm. Yeah. This one's what they call an incorrigible. No, he'll be put away for good. And we'll all be better off for it. Yeah, I guess so. And this thing is over. How's the state, Mr. Barron? Pauline, mm. this morning the sheriff called me here at the house. Oh, he did? He left an important message. As usual, you forgot to give it to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Baring. I'm convinced you did it on purpose. Why would I do it on purpose? I don't know. I don't care. But the next time you forget about something, you're finished. Fired. Do you get that? Yes, Mr. Baring. I get it. No, I didn't. That boy will pay for you. 
He's a hardened criminal. He deserves to be put away. Can you live with that? Yes, if I have to. I don't think so. Emily doesn't think so either. I... I was going to confess. Yes? I went there to his office for just that reason. But you didn't do it. I couldn't. I tried, but... but yes? I looked at his face. The sheriff's face. He wears those glasses with the, the steel wire frames. And he... He scared me. I couldn't open my mouth. Poor Franklin. I should confess I know that. It's the right thing to do. It's the only thing. Then why don't you do it? I'm afraid of saying it to the sheriff. I understand. You do? Of course. He's such a strict, righteous-looking man. Write him a note. A note? Just write. Here. A pen and paper. Pick up the pen. Right. I'll tell you what to write. Dear Sheriff Bonham, I confess to the killing of Robin Meadows. It was unintentional. I just was overcome by a terrible urge that I couldn't control. I will sit here in my room and wait for you to come for me. Sincerely yours, Franklin J. Barry. Yes. That looks all right. Now, fold it and place it inside the envelope and seal it. And address it to the sheriff. Town Hall, Eucalyptus Falls, California. Good. And in the drawer, there's a stamp. Good. Place it on the envelope. That's right. No. Wait. For what? Let me think. Let me think. We can't wait, Emily and I. We must go to the wintering place. No. Do you want us to leave without you? No, no. We will. Oh, Franklin, how we love you, Emily and I. How we want to be with you, always. Please, Franklin, come with us. Uh, yes, yes, I want to go with you. Uh, 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 but Pauline! Pauline! Yes? Yes, Mr. Barry. What is it? Uh... What time are you going downtown in the morning? Oh, just about 7.30. Mail this letter for me. Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Baring, I will. Now, make sure you don't forget. Oh, don't worry. I won't forget. More coffee, Mr. Baring? Mr. Baring? Huh? More coffee? Pauline? Mm -hmm. What time did you go downtown this morning? Oh, usual time, seven o'clock. Last night, I asked you to do something. You did? You know I did. I asked you to mail a letter. Oh. Oh, yes, yeah, uh, that's why. Did you mail that letter? Did I mail that letter? Oh, oh of course I mailed that letter. Oh. More coffee. You sure? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Where did you mail it? Where I, uh... Well, I... I dropped it in a, a mailbox. Which mailbox? Which mail... Oh, the, uh... The one beside the fork of the road, just as Route 4 to 6 becomes Main Street. Oh. Is, uh, everything all right? But tell me... Where it has that card on the box? You know, did you ever read the card on the box? The one that tells what time the mail is being picked up? Oh, well, I, uh... I think it, it said uh, at a quarter to twelve in the morning. You sure? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Well, what time is it now? Well, uh, I have 11.30. <coughs> well, Mr. Baring, aren't you going to finish breakfast? Now, what could have gotten into him? Well, Mr. Baring, I can't do that. 
All I want is my letter. Now, look, you put a stamp on a letter, you drop it in a box, it's the property of the U.S. mail till it's delivered to the addressee. Now, look, last night I wrote a letter, an important letter. All night I've been thinking about that letter. Mm -hmm. And I changed my mind. But it was already dropped in the box. Well, how do I know it's your letter? Now, I give you a letter you claim you wrote to somebody and get myself fired from my job, lose my pension? I have to have that letter. That's all there is to it. I should go out on a limb for you? What do I owe you, anyhow? What did you ever give me but a hard time? Just let me pass. I mean to have that letter. Hey, get your hands off that bag. It's the property of the U.S. Mail. All I'm going to take is that letter. Now you get your hands off of that. Are you crazy? I'll kill you if you try to stop me. What? Hey, now, now, now wait. You, you just you just put that gun away. I warned you. Now, let go of the bag. Oh. I told you. Now, I'm going to take that letter. Where, where is that letter? The, the letter... Where, where, where is it? Where is the letter? He just shot poor Bobby in cold blood. Well, he was real upset this morning, Sheriff. But why would he shoot Bobby? Hmm? It was about a letter that was in the mailbox. Uh, Bobby had just picked it up and he wanted it back. Oh. Oh. Hmm? What is it? What are you saying O for? The letter wasn't there. Oh. How would you know? Because I forgot to mail it. Here it is. He asked, and I was afraid to tell him. He'd have fired me. I wonder what could have been in this letter. Well, uh, it's going to be Exhibit A in a murder case. So I guess we're going to find out. And they did. And so you see, they not only had Frank Baring for one murder, they also had him for two. And he not only got to go to the wintering place, but also to a summer, spring, and fall place as well. I'm not going anyplace. I'll be right back. place, the secret place of security and safety, so precious to every living creature, where we renew ourselves for the constant struggle for existence, and wherever it can be found, we must go there, no matter how long, arduous, and perilous the journey. Why, even the fragile butterfly can travel 3,000 miles to get there and back. Our cast included Robert Dryden, E.V. Juster, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Kind of scary when you come right down to it. What, the cat? No, the cat is a cat, but the way Dinah feels about it. <laughs> How does she feel about it? Well, you know what a familiar is. The alter ego of a witch. Hey, what? You, you're suggesting that Dinah oh, is Oh, don't a be woman. ridiculous, but she read about it somewhere. You know how much she reads and how suggestible she is, and I swear she's got this notion that the cat is... Well, I, I sort of said it already. Her other self. Oh, come on, Joan. What on earth would give you the idea that... She you... talks to herself, Dave. Well, who doesn't if you're alone enough? Out loud? Well, sometimes, like to an imaginary playmate. Well, this isn't exactly the same... The playmate talks back in another voice. You're kidding. I wish I were. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
news. A Japan Airlines plane has been hijacked over India. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. Details reported by Bruce Dunning in Tokyo. The Japan Airlines DC-8 sent a hijack-in-progress signal shortly after takeoff from Bombay on a flight for Bangkok and Tokyo. An airline spokesman said Indian aviation authorities had reported there are several hijackers involved and that they are believed to be members of the so-called Red Army. This is a group of Japanese ultra-leftists who have worked with Palestinian radicals in previous terrorist activities, including one hijacking of a Japanese plane in 1973. This plane reportedly is carrying 141 passengers and 14 crew members. The airline spokesman said reports from Bombay indicated that the plane at first appeared to attempt to return to the Bombay airfield, but then resumed its course for Bangkok. It is the second serious problem for Japan Airlines in less than 24 hours. Another Japanese DC-8 crashed and burned near Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, killing 26 people. Bruce Dunning, CBS News, Tokyo. More news in a moment. The United States and the Soviet Union report making progress toward a new strategic arms limitation agreement to replace the one expiring October 3rd. The announcement came at the White House late Thursday night after a one-hour and 40-minute meeting between President Carter and Soviet Foreign Minister Gromyko. Secretary of State Vance was also at the meeting. After the session, Gromyko spoke to reporters through an interpreter. Both sides have uh, the intention, and it's a firm intention. Will you confirm whether it's a firm intention or not? I will confirm it's a firm intention to work towards the conclusion of this second agreement. As you Americans say, to finalize it. Those last words were Gromyko's. Vats and Gromyko will meet again in New York later this week. The New York Times reports that a proposal to limit tax deductions for business meals to one-half the tab is virtually certain to be part of President Carter's tax revision proposals. Quoting administration sources, the Times says this is seen as a workable alternative to trying to set a flat dollar limit on such expenses. The Senate is still in session with liberals filibustering against efforts to end price controls on natural gas. It looks like the lawmakers could be there all night. Liberals have introduced a flood of amendments and are demanding roll call votes on virtually all of them. The delaying tactic is...